Hello everyone, my name is Jakara Lewis and I'm the author of the Kitsis Series T6 Math Edition, which is a workbook that I created in order to better assist you guys in prepping for the math portion of your T's test. The book includes a couple of goodies, one in which I've already given to you guys for free, which is the Diagnostic Test, located in the Files tab at the top of the page, which is a test um, that you guys can use to gauge where your strengths and weaknesses are prior to studying so it can help to guide your to guide how you organize your studying. Um, there are two full length practice tests included as well. There are over 1400 practice questions um, given in order to ensure that you guys are retaining the information that you guys are getting. Um, the topics have been clustered into five groups based on how similar they are in terms of solving as well as level of difficulty. And again, in order to help you guys to be able to retain, retain um, certain information. So that's my biggest thing as a former math teacher is making sure that you guys are given the correct tools in order to utilize in order for you guys to have a better chance at scoring higher on your test so if you are interested in purchasing the book you can purchase it at lewis-wilderpublishing.com um orders are shipped out one to two business days after they are received and normally depending on the shipping it takes two to three business days to get to you and of course it's forty dollars so so far we've been getting some really great reviews and feedback um so if you are interested in purchasing a book again you can purchase it um at the website lewis-wilderpublishing.com. All right, so today's video is something that I've been dreading to do because I know it's, it seems like it's gonna take me forever. I'm probably gonna have to do it in like three or four different parts and that's solving equations in one variable. Um, There are so many different ways that they can give you guys solving equations. It could be one step, it could be two step, um, it, it could be multi-step, it could be absolute value, it could be inequalities. It's just so many different ways that they can present it to you. So I'm going to go through as many different scenarios as possible because you guys are um, more than likely guaranteed to see equations on your test. So we want to make sure you guys are in the right boat. So I will say the first couple of videos that I'm going to do are going to be how to solve equations full out. And then later on when I double back and do videos, I'm gonna show you guys how to work backwards from the answers because again, I'm a true believer in um, strategy and content mixed together. So with equations, because this is a multiple choice test, I always encourage people who haven't mastered um, solving equations to just work backwards and plug in their answers. And that's just me, everybody has a different approach. And if you're a person and you feel like you wanna work it all the way out, then that's fine. But at the end of the day for this test, they don't really care how you get to the answer as long as you get the correct answer. All right, so first we're gonna start with our basic one-step equations because I want you guys visually to be able to see the four different operations, what it looks like. So when we move into or transition into two-step and multi-step, it'll be a lot easier. So that's gonna be the most important thing for solving equations that you have to master the basic one-step equations because if you understand that in order to solve an equation, I'm, I'm undoing what I'm seeing. I'm basically unraveling something. I'm doing the opposite of what I see. Um, you'll definitely be fine. All right, so equations can come in four different operations. We have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication, and we have division. So of course, with addition and subtraction, it's a little bit more obvious because we have an addition sign and we have a subtraction sign. For multiplication, we don't actually have a multiplication sign. I mean, some, some equations might more than likely won't see it, but anytime you have a number and a variable stuck together like this with nothing in between, that means they're multiplied together, okay? So again, when you guys see a number and a variable together, that means they're multiplied together. So this would be an example of when you will see multiplication in an equation. Um, with division, very seldom will you actually see a division sign, if ever. More than likely, it'll be in the form of a fraction because a fraction is another way to visually represent um, division. So this would be an example of an equation with division. So the key to, oh, one second. All right, there we go. All right, so the key to solving equations is understanding that everything has to move away from your variable. So based on whatever operation or operations that you see, you have to do the opposite of that to be able to solve. So anytime I'm dealing with an addition equation, if I wanna solve it, which I'll go through and do an example for you guys, I know in my head I have to subtract. If I do a subtraction problem, I know in order to solve it, I have to do the opposite of subtraction, which is addition. So you have to know the opposites. Addition and subtraction are gonna be opposites to one another multiplication and division are gonna be opposites of one another, okay? So I know if I see a multiplication equation, if I wanna solve it, I have to do the opposite, which is divide. And again, with division, if I see a division equation, if I wanna solve it, I multiply, which is the opposite of that, all right? I'm gonna go through and work through each of them individually at the one step level, just so you guys can get a clear view. That I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people have a really hard time 
master in solving equations because they don't understand how important the foundational one-step equations are because if you have a good grasp on that then it, it's really 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 hard to mess up um no matter how many steps they give you that's the part that i try to get people to understand all the time All right, so again, we're starting with our basic one-step equations because I just want to show you guys how to solve them or undo everything that you see so that makes it a lot easier. All right, so we start with an addition problem. Of course, it's obvious that it's addition because we have an addition sign. So this is x plus 4 is equal to 10. So, of course, this is a basic problem. So when people see basic problems, normally people will say, well, I know that 6 plus 4 is 10, so x has to be 6. The reason why when I um, was teaching, I never, ever taught it that way was because I knew that if people did not master step by step, how it starting with the one step equations, when we rolled into two step and multi step, those were the same people who had a problem because they were so used to inserting a value. And that doesn't always work. So that's why I always tell people, you have to write your work out step by step, no matter how easy the problem is, because it foundationally, if you strengthen that, no matter what they give you, it's gonna work. One second, you guys. All right, so I know that if I have addition, if I want to solve it, what are the opposite of that, which is subtraction. All right, so when you're dealing with equations or inequalities or anytime you're actually trying to solve, um, this was a question that I saw. When, if I want to move this four to the other side, right, because this is an equation that has to balance out, which means whatever happens on one side has to happen on the other side. So I know if I'm going to subtract four, and again, we're subtracting because that's the opposite of what we see, and that's how we always solve by doing the opposite. I have to subtract four from this size. It has you have to visually see it disappear from this side to to ensure that you're doing it correctly. Because I know if I do four minus four, that's zero, which means I can just cancel it out. Okay. Sometimes people skip this step and they end up making a mistake along the lines because maybe they didn't move the correct value. Maybe this didn't match on both sides. All right. So we bring down our x, and we know that ten minus four is six. Anytime I solve equations, especially under testing conditions, because sometimes you just may be a little nervous, you may not be thinking correctly, you may be moving too fast, I always take my answer that I got and I plug it back into my equation to ensure that I got it right. Because sometimes I'll go through and I'll do something and I'm like, that doesn't even look like it's right. I go back and plug it in and it's not right. So if I have x plus 4 equals 10, instead of x, I'm going to substitute a 6 in. So I know six plus four is 10 and six and four, we know it's 10. So when it's equal on both sides, that, that's, how, that's how you know it's correct. This part is very important, especially for my people who, who are gonna try to bypass mastering this and kind of go straight to the shortcut of working backwards from your answer. You have to understand how to plug in your answers and know that if they're equal on both sides at the end, then that's the correct answer. And of course, if the values were not equal, then that wouldn't be the answer. And again, I can't stress enough how important foundationally these one-step equations are. This is why a lot of people cannot master multi-step equations because they never got a full grasp on the one-step equations. And I've seen that time and time again on every single level that I've taught, whether it was middle school or high school or people who were in college, that was the, the common um, factor is that a lot of people didn't master the one-step equations because they felt like they were so easy, they could do them in their head. But the problem, again, as I've stated, is that once you transition into two or multi-step problems, you can no longer do that. And that really shows who really mastered the material. All right, so moving on to subtraction. We know a subtraction because we have a subtraction sign. So anytime I see um, an equation involving subtraction, I know in order to solve the opposite of that, it's going to be addition. So because this is a minus three, I know I have to add three to both sides. And anytime we're dealing with an equation or inequality, it always has to happen on both sides to keep it balanced, okay? All right, so we're going to do plus three, plus three. So if I do negative three plus three, that cancels out to zero. Um, minus signs also make numbers negative, just to let you guys know. All right, and I know that 14 plus three is 17. We also want to go back and plug in our answer to make sure we got it right. Because again, when you guys are under these testing conditions, you are more likely to make a mistake, okay? And you want to double check for yourself that you're doing it right because the points do matter. You guys have minimum scores you have to get 
And if you know you're capable of getting a question right, you want to put your best foot forward. So we substituted 17 for x, and we know that 17 minus 3 is 14, and because it's equal on both sides, I know that that's correct. All right. And if you guys have any questions as I am going through the problems, please feel free to let me know so I can make sure that I can clarify everything for you guys. Now, I will say for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, equations is something that you do have to know how to maneuver through it, whether you're solving it all the way through or you're working backwards from your answer. I don't want you guys to get to your test and you just completely just say, oh, I forget about equations, but what if you get a whole bunch of them? There's a lot of points that you guys are gonna miss and you don't want it to be like that. All right, so we move on to multiplication. Remember what I told you guys. Let me change it to a different letter because that X just makes it look like weird. All right, um, anytime I have a number and a variable stuck together with no space in between them, they were joined together through multiplication. So typically, this is what multiplication will look like, even if it's in a uh, two-step or multi-step problem. You know that when you see a number and a variable joined together, they're joined through multiplication. And the only way to separate them is to divide, okay? So... Whenever you um, are dealing with equations and inequalities, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to both sides. Or what's to the other side? So I'm going to divide this side out by three. I'm going to divide this, this out by three. These threes are going to cancel out. And they cancel out because we know that three divided by three is one, right? So people say, oh my God, you can still write the one, yes. But if you, if you know that anytime you multiply a number of times, one is always itself, it doesn't make a difference whether the one is there or not. If I do one times five, that's five. One times a thousand is a thousand. So that's why people say this cancels out, okay? All right, we can bring down our A and 48 divided by three is 16. Of course, we want to make sure we go back and plug in our answers. So when we're dealing with multiplication, when we substitute in our value, we're going to put it in parentheses so we can indicate that it's multiplication, right? And then 3 times 16 is 48. And because it's equal on both sides, that means that it's correct. Don't forget, you guys should be practicing with these four function calculators because this is the type of calculator you guys are going to, that's going to be embedded in your test. All right, so you guys want to make sure you're using the correct tools so that you don't get to your test and like super bummed out about what they have going on. All right, and then our very last one is going to be division. And then after division, we're going to segue into some two-step um, problems so I can show you guys how it's interconnected. And then we will go from there. I mean, all in all, I don't really feel like equations are bad, but I do know the only way to master equations is if you practice a lot. You know, and that's the problem that people tend to have is that they don't want to practice. But you have to practice, though. Like, it's essential to excess. excess. <laughs> it's, the, it's essential to success. I said I was gonna, I have to start back reading like I used to because I feel like my vocabulary is just lagging. Like, I used to love reading all the time, but I get so busy now. It's so much harder to find time. All right, so with division, of course, anytime you guys see something in fraction form, that's just another way of actually visually showing division. So I know if I want to solve or undo my division, I have to do the opposite of that, which is multiplication. So you always multiply basically by whatever number you have. Usually it's in the denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides by 4. So it's two different ways you can do it. Um, and you guys will see more so when we do the two-step equations, the way that I teach it um, in reference to make connections between my numbers versus actually showing the um, operations. All right, so I know if I multiply both sides by 4, these 4s are going to cancel out. Because 4 divided by 4 is 1, and what do we know? 1 times any number always is always itself. So we know 3 times 4 is 12. So we want to plug in our answer just to check. So I know if I have x over 4 equals 3, instead of x, I'm going to put 12. And I know that 12 divided by 4 is 3. And since it matches on both sides, that means that the answer is correct. All right, so seems pretty simple, seems pretty straightforward. The transition is where people tend to have the most problem. That's what I remember from the classroom. Like, everybody will be really fine with one-step equations because, again, a lot of the times people aren't showing their work. They're, they're just able to kind of plug in the numbers based on what they see. But when the transition occurs to two-step equations, that's where all the hoopla occurs and everybody's like, oh, you didn't teach me that or I don't know how to do that. It's like what you do, though. You have the skills to be able to complete it. You just got to follow through with it. All right, so let's see where we are. What if, 
where the two sets of numbers in parentheses. Okay, I will. What if the number in the middle is also X? So can you show me an example of what you mean when you say, what if the number in the middle is also X? So I'll know if you send me, like if you guys send me examples exactly of what the problems look like, then it's easier for me to be able to um, solve them. And I'll make sure I solve it before I get off of here. All right, so we look at our next equation. So now we have way more values, right? Oh, Lord. How did that? How did I do that? There we go. All right, so now we have a two-step equation, which features way more values, of course. So we have 2x plus 4 is equal to 10. So when I used to teach equations um, in the classroom, what I did was I used to like for my students to first be able to identify what, because we know we're dealing with two steps, obviously. What two operations do you see, first and foremost? So then we can figure out how to undo it. So I know that if 2 and x are joined together, I know that's going to be multiplication. Because I would have them draw a chart. So I know I have multiplication, I have a plus sign, so that's gonna be addition, right? Does that look addition? So I know before I even, so we have addition and we have multiplication. I know before I even start, in order to be able to solve it, the opposite of addition is subtraction. So I know I have to subtract something and the opposite of multiplication is division, so I have to divide something out. So if they kind of already have it in their head what they have to do, they just have to make sure they apply these operations to the correct problems. I did find that this worked a lot easier for some students. For some students it does, some students it doesn't. So I'm going to show you guys the traditional way, like how I just showed you guys with the one-step equations, and then I'm going to double back and show you how to do this again with drawing your connections between your numbers. Okay? All right, so I know I have to subtract first. So you always add or subtract first normally before you divide unless you're distributing which we'll talk about next. So I'm going to subtract 4, and you always do it from both sides. I know that 4 minus 4 is 0, so those are going to cancel out. I'm going to bring down my 2x, and we know that 10 minus 4 is 6. So we've done our subtraction. So now we know that division is left. So I have to divide both sides by 2. These are going to cancel out, so I know that x is equal to 3, because 6 divided by 2 is 3. You always want to double back and check your answer. So I know if I have 2x plus 4 equals 10, I'm going to substitute in my 3. And because it's multiplication, we're going to place it inside of a parenthesis so we can indicate that it's multiplication so we remember how to solve it. All right, and we know that 2 times 3 is 6. And we know that 6 plus 4 is equal to 10. So because both sides are equal, that means our equation is correct. So again, if you are somebody who never really mastered equations and you still kind of have a hard time starting out, if you draw your chart and you list what operations you see, you can automatically list the ones that are opposite so you'll know the things you have to do to be able to solve it. You know, that makes it a lot easier for certain people. All right, so I know I subtracted four from both sides. And remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. And that goes for inequalities as well. So we subtracted four out. These fours canceled. 10 minus 4 gave us 6. And then our next operation, of course, was division. So we divided 2 out on both sides. We got x equals 3. We plugged it in to double check our answer. And because our last two numbers were equal, that means that the answer is correct. All right, let's try another one. All right, so I have x over 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. Sometimes people see this fraction and freak out. They go crazy like, oh, my God, it has a fraction in it. It's okay because if you understand what equation that the fraction is the same thing as division, it won't worry you that much. So what two operations do we see? We see subtraction and we see division. All right. So I know the opposite of subtraction is addition, and the opposite of um, division is multiplication. So I have to add and multiply in order to be able to solve. All right, so since my subtraction sign is here, I know this is where I'm going to add my 2 because that's the opposite. These 2s are going to cancel out because negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and the minus sign makes the number negative. So I bring down my x minus, I mean x over 4, and we know 2 plus 2 is 4. So now I know in order to solve, I have to multiply. You always multiply by the number in the denominator normally. So multiply both sides by 4. These 4s are going to cancel out because 4 divided by 4 is 1. 
And we know that x time, I mean, shoot, x is equal to 4 times 4, which is 16. All right, so we're going to go ahead and check our answer. And again, I can't stress this enough. I definitely advise that you guys always, always, always go back and check your answer, okay? Because you can go through and you can do a problem and it seems like you're on the right path and you're doing right and you could have made a mistake um, somewhere along the line. Um, if you guys notice, especially with like the problems that I gave in diagnostic tests or anybody who's purchased the books. Um, and doing the answer keys, it took me a little bit longer because I went through and I made all the mistakes that I knew that you guys would make. I made the common mistakes because I wanted you to feel like you got the answer right. I wanted you to feel real confident in that. So when you saw that it wasn't right, your first response should be, what did I do wrong? And how can I fix it? All right? 16 divided by 4 is 4. And we know 4, to 4 minus 2 is 2. And because it's equal on both sides, that means that it's correct. All right, let me double check to see if we have any other equations. All right, so 3x, okay, I got that. The x behind the 4 doesn't belong. So 3x plus 4 equals 16. Can you solve an equation with your two sets? Okay, so 3x plus 4 equals 16. All right, and another thing, too, is that sometimes when you, when you guys um, – are solving equations right sometimes you'll come out and your answer will actually be a fraction and that freaks people out because then you automatically think like oh my god i did something wrong well sometimes the answer is actually meant to be a fraction all right so if i have 3x plus 4 is equal to 16 so first things first i make my chart that's not something that everybody has to do if you've already mastered how to solve equations then you don't have to do this part but i found that this helps with people who really have a hard time understanding when to do what you know that's why those one-step equations are super important and they come in handy because if you foundational, if you understand when you see one and you know how to undo it, or you know what the opposite is, then you'll be good. So I know from here, I see addition and I see multiplication. So I know to undo that, the opposite of addition is going to be subtraction. And the opposite of multiplication is going to be division. So I know I have to subtract something and I have to divide something else. All right, so of course, since this is my addition sign, this is where I'm going to subtract because that's the opposite again. So I know that 4 minus 4 is 0. Bring down my 3x. 16 minus 4 is 12. So that's gone. So the last thing I can do is actually divide. The only number that's left is 3, which is closest to the x. And you always move everything away from your variable. If you guys notice, my variable is still here. Everything else is going to the other side. All right, so these 3s are going to cancel. And x is equal to 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So we're going to take the 4 and we're going to... Oh, no, that came out. Oh, that didn't come out to a fraction. But sometimes answers can be fractions. All right, so we're going to take our answer and we're going to plug it back in so we can make sure that we got it right. And this is the part, again, I'll say it a thousand times if I have to. I always recommend that you guys go back and double check your answer because even I have been in situations where I get it wrong. I do math all the time. All right, three times four, we know it's 12. Oops. All right, and 12 plus 4 is equal to 16, and 16 is 16, so that means that that worked out. Perfect. All right, I'm going to take this same problem, and I'm going to redo it um, using a method that I used to teach in the classroom, which was making connections between the numbers, um, because I just found that sometimes equations can become very cumbersome, so I always try to look for ways to kind of make it easier for people to be able, or students to be able to execute it. So... I did find that visually drawing the connections between the numbers was way better for some of my students. So we'll see how some of you guys respond and then you let me know what you think about it. All right. All right. So I know that I have addition and multiplication once again. So in order to solve the opposite is subtraction and division. So because my addition sign is here, I know the four is what has to be move to the other side and we know the opposite of addition and subtraction so I know I have to subtract so I bring down my 3x and we know that 16 minus 4 is 12 right all right so then we draw our connection between our last numbers we know that it has to be division based on our chart so if I do 12 divided by 3 I know that that is 4 so that's another way 
that um, you guys could solve it. It just depends on the person. Sometimes people overthink drawing the connections and then they kind of lose it. But it's real, really simplistic in form. You just always understand that whatever is already on this side, this is what's always going to be first in operation. So see how I made my connection? Since I'm moving to four, I know that it has to be 16 minus the four. Since I'm moving to three, I know it has to be 12 divided by the three. All right, so I don't know. Drawing connections is, it works for some people. Some people it doesn't. Again, it just depends on the type of learner that you are. So I've, I've dealt with so many different types of students. So I always try to make a way for those who don't quite fit in the normal mold of things. All right, um, we have 3x minus 4x. You sure it was 3x minus 4x and then 5x plus 11? Because that would be a little off double check that one for me please because it looks a little different all right so now i'm going to move into problems with variables on both sides which is something that you guys are probably really likely to see because not only do you guys have to um combine like terms you're still expected to be able to solve them all right so for those of you who don't know what like terms are like terms are just going to be numbers that are attached to the same variable so if I have like 2x and 3x, those are like terms because they both have an x attached to them. If I have 1a and 2b, those are not like terms because they have two different variables or two different letters they're attached to. All right, anytime I have a number that's by itself, this number is considered to be a constant and all constants are, can always be combined. So like one and five, those are both constants. So I can combine those. Four and 10, we know are both constants. So I know that I can go ahead and combine those. So. Before you can ever really solve an equation, you want to make sure that all of your terms are combined, meaning that I should literally have one of everything before I can say that I can solve. So you see how I have two x's? Those have to be combined. You see how I have two constants? I know again that those have to be combined. So one thing I used to do to help my students out is we used to draw shapes. Um, around our like terms if you've already mastered it and that's not something that I recommend that you do but if you're a person um, who's more of a visual learner and you have more of, of an issue understanding the idea of like terms then um, drawing is better so we always underline our constants so I know okay these two have to be combined together in some shape or form and then I know because these both have X's I'll go ahead and I'll put circles around those two I know that those have to be combined all right, so your goal is to get your variables on one side and your other values on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 4 to that side and I'm going to move the 2x to this side. So because this is a minus 4, we always do the opposite of what we see. So if I want to move it, the opposite of subtraction is addition. So I'm going to add 4 to this side. And of course, since I already know I'm combining it with the 10, I'm going to add it to the 10, all right? That's why understanding, oops, that's why understanding your like terms is so important. Because if you already know it's being combined, it doesn't bother you even trying to do 2x and 4 together because you know that they won't mesh. All right, so these are going to cancel out. So I'm going to bring down my 3x is equal to 2x. And then we know 10 plus 4 is 14. All right, so I know that these two are like terms because they both have x's. So I need to move this 2x to the other side. Now, anytime you have a value, like whether it has a variable or not, if it doesn't have anything in front of it, right, we can automatically assume that it's positive because it's nothing there. So if I want to move it to the other side, a positive is just like addition. So the opposite of that is going to be subtraction, right, a negative. So we're going to have to subtract out the 2x. These are going to cancel out. 3x minus 2x is 1x equals 14. All right, now if we go back foundationally to our operations, this is multiplication. So if I want to solve it, I have to divide out to be able to get my answer. And we know 14 divided by 1 is 14. All right, so we want to go back and we want to check our answer to make sure that we got it right. Now you see how we have two variables. That means I have to substitute this 14 in here two times. So we're going to do 3 parentheses to indicate that that is multiplication. Ooh, that was all bad. All right, minus four, and then two parentheses 14 plus 10. 
All right, so three times 14 is what? I don't wanna use my calculator then. 42. All right, and two times 14 is 28. All right, 42 minus four is 38, and 28 plus 10 is 38. So because both sides are equal, then I know that that worked out good for me. So if they give you guys more than one of certain terms, you have to combine those terms. So if you guys hear people say stuff like, oh, you have to combine your like terms, that's what they mean. So because three and two both are attached to X's, those are like terms, so they can be combined. Because four and 10 are numbers that are by themselves, those are considered constants, so they, they can be combined as well. All right. Solving equations is not that bad, but again, you guys just have to put in the time to be able to study. But um, most of the time, if, if people are liking their time crunch when I was tutoring, um, I just taught them how to work backwards on the answers because there really was no point in um, trying to master something if you didn't have the time to actually do it. All right, so did they just give you 3x plus 4 and then 5x minus 11 and they told you to simplify it? Is that what it asked you to do? What was it again? 3x plus 4, 5x minus 11. All right, I want to make sure they just asking you to simplify before I get into it. All right, so if that was what we're supposed to do, so this is this is not actually solving. This is more along the lines of simplifying an expression or multiplying expressions together. So anytime you have two parentheses um, that include expressions, um, when you multiply them together, you have to do what's called um, foiling. Or you can use what's called the box method. It's completely up to you, but I'll show you guys both of them. All right, so FOIL is going to be an acronym for, let me move this up. You don't know I need that. For first, first, outer, inner, and last. I haven't FOIL in so long. And basically what it does is it tells you um like which order to multiply the values in um i don't really like for that much anymore because i found that the box method just was so much easier for certain people but it just depends on the learner so my first two values are going to be these two so i'm doing 3x times 5x so anytime you multiply values together with variables you do numbers first variables second so three times five i know is going to be 15 x times x gives me x squared or x to the second power I'm going to do my outer value. So my outer value is going to be my 3x and my negative 11. Minus sign makes it negative. So 3 times 11 is 33. And then we just bring our x down. All right, now we're going to do our inner value. So these two. So 4 times 5 is 20. And we're doing plus because that's a positive 4. And we bring down our x. All right, and then our last two are going to be 4 and negative 11, which gives us negative 44. All right, your like terms should always usually end up in the middle because we have x and x. All right, and I know that negative 33 plus 20 is going to be a negative 13x. And then we'll just bring everything else down. I didn't even know they still had simplifying expressions on there. I thought that that was more from um, the T's five. But again, of course, they're always going to pull from a pool of different types of questions. So it's no... It's no telling. Everybody can get some stuff that's the same and some stuff that's different. So again, this is called um, multiplying binomials is normally what it's called, multiplying expressions. And they use um, a tactic called foiling. So you multiply the first two values, the outer values, the inner values, and the last values, okay? And for some people, it seems a little foreign, but if you practice it enough, then it'll become a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to show you guys an alternative way to solve this um, through the box method, which again, it just depends on the type of learner that you are. 3x plus 4, 5x minus 11. Alright. 
All right, so the box method is just like, um, if you guys have taken chemistry, it's just like the Punnett square. So it's another way that you guys can um, simplify expressions. So I did one of my expressions on top. Order doesn't matter. So you can do 5x minus 11 on top if you want to. Um, it's still going to be the same answer. I mean, I did 5x minus 11 on the bottom. So I, I'm on the side. So I've made it a negative 11 because the minus sign makes it negative. So it helps when I multiply my values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take every value from the top and I'm going to multiply it times each value on the side. So I'm going to do 3x times 5x. So we know 3 and 5 is 15 and x and x is x squared. Now I'm going to do 4 times 5x. So we know 4 and 5 is 20. And we just move our x over. All right, now we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to go down to the negative 11. So I'm going to do 3x and negative 11. So we know 3 and negative 11 give us negative 33. All right, I'm going to do 4 and negative 11, which gives me negative 44. All right, so your like terms normally are always going to be diagonal from one another. So I bring down my 15x squared. I know that negative 33 and a positive 20 gives me a negative 13x. And then we bring down our minus 44. So again, if you guys um, are looking into practicing simplifying expressions, um, well, multiplying expressions together, um, the most you, you just have to keep practicing it. It's just one of those things you kind of have to get in the groove of because it's not hard, but if you don't practice it enough, it's very easy to forget. It's gonna make you feel like you don't know what you're doing. This is really not that hard of a topic. I'm real honest about certain things. Like I know, like equations is harder for people to be able to grasp because it just takes so many, you know, so many times to really get in the groove of it. But it's just practice. All right, so we're gonna look at. Let me see if I have any comments first. Um, look at solving equations when you have to actually distribute. Um, anytime you have to distribute, that's when you have a number like in front of a parentheses. And sometimes people see that and they get stuck. Hello, how y'all doing? Good, how are you? Good. Are you guys looking for something in particular or are you just looking? Just looking. Okay, well, let me know if you guys would like to try anything going. Yes, we will. Okay. All right, so in this instance, we have two parentheses x plus five is equal to 30. So anytime you guys have a number that's attached to a parentheses or any type of grouping symbol, whether it's a um, bracket, this means that you're going to have to multiply this times everything that's inside this parentheses, okay? You're going to have to distribute it out. You're going to have to give it out. So I like to draw arrows to indicate that so I can make sure that I do all the multiplication possible. So if I do 2 times x, anytime I multiply a number and a variable together, they'll just stick them together. So that's 2x. If I do 2 times 5, that's 10. And because it's a plus sign, it makes it positive. So I do plus 10 is equal to 30. All right, and then now we're back in our normal bowl. So normally, they just add extra steps, whether it's combining like terms or distributing, and then you should always kind of end up back in that bowl of a one or two step equation. All right, and then from here, if we make our chart real quick, I know that I see addition and multiplication. So the opposite of those are gonna be subtraction and division. All right, so I know since this is plus 10, I'm gonna subtract it out on both sides. So whatever you do to one side, you have to do the other side. So 10 minus 10, we know cancels out. And 30 minus 10 is 20. We know that our last operation has to be division. So we divide two out on both sides. These twos cancel out and 20 divided by two gives us 10. All right, and we always want to go back and make sure that we answered it correctly. So we're going to take this and we're going to plug it back in. So our original equation is 2 times x plus 5 is equal to 30. Wait, are you guys going somewhere in particular? Instead of x, we're going to substitute in our 10. All right, and if we go by order of operations, we solve what's in the parentheses first. So 10 plus 5 gives us 15. All right, and then we know that 2 times 15 gives us 30. So because it's equal on both sides, that's the correct answer. So, so far we've looked at solving one-step equations, which of course I feel like is foundational for you guys. If, if you guys can master the foundations, understanding that when you see certain operations in order to be able to solve, you do the opposite of that, then it's way easier to transition into your two-step equations. 
Um, normally with multi-step equations, um, you guys are either going to have to distribute, you're going to have to simplify. So you may be in a position where you have to distribute. Um, you may have to combine like terms. It's so many different ways that they could give it to you guys. So I just want to make sure that you guys, when it comes to equations, you get more than enough practice. Put yourself in a lot of different scenarios. So that when you get to your test, you're not like super surprised or super bummed out about it. All right, so that's going to be it for part one. For part two, I'm going to look at absolute value equations, and then we're going to segue into inequalities, which is very similar um, to equations. Um, and then we'll go from there. So if you guys have any practice questions you guys have seen or worked on and you want, you would like for me to work it out in the next video, send it to me via a message, or you can write it on the wall, and I'll add it to our next video.